This is actually two inches below water level right there. Okay. So I'm trying to get the top of this log like two inches below water level. So we have to dig this down, just drop it down. We want like a, we want fish to be able to swim up and kind of roll over this little log dam. If okay. If they want to, so. Dan, do you know what total dynamic head is? Um, I don't have an appropriate answer for that. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go over to Ed the Pond Professor. Total dynamic head is the combination of all those different factors. So it's taking the friction loss that's inside of the pipe. It's taking the weight of the water taking that distance, the velocities, all those things into consideration. The calculations that we're using are gonna be very simplistic. I mean, if you're gonna to talk to an engineer, they'll probably give you a thousand different parameters that we should actually look into. But for us, what we're looking for in this particular project, you know, we do have a little fluff. day two we made measurable progress yesterday as you saw you've got Dan and Micho that mark over here and then Antonio setting another driftwood element in here now what they're doing is they're dry setting it but let me have Dan explain to you exactly what he's going for here what's up Chris what up dude so we're dry setting this thing we're just dry setting it so it's, uh, I mean we're, we're setting it outside the liner so we know where to dig it down I'm trying to get this this is actually two inches below water level right there okay so I'm trying to get the top of this log like two inches below water level so we have to dig this down and just drop it down. We want like a, we want fish to be able to swim up and kind of roll over this little log dam. If okay. If they want to, so we'll drop this two inches below water level, which will give us three or four inches of when the water's flowing, so. Because your whole ambition, right, is to have this thing be very shallow, really fast moving water. Yeah, this upper section is be shallow, quick moving water, just to mimic a, a mountain stream. I love it, and I love all the wood elements that were, I mean, that's what you see in nature, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, totally. all your days of hiking around the Pacific Northwest, you see all these felled yeah, trees logs, and. Yeah, especially in corners, it bends like this, the logs get jammed up in the corner, and then the water keeps on going around. Yeah, so. it's awesome. I'm to make it make sense. Exactly where we want it, so there's couldn't really do it without the laser. 
I mean, you could string some levels with it. So that's real important to have the laser and know where your water level is. So this high point here is, yeah, it's about three inches below water level. Yep. So we'll have a nice deep pocket here, a nice deep pocket here. So if these fish want to pop the log and go up the stream, they should have plenty of water to do that. Which is a very natural thing for them to yeah, do. Yeah, totally, yeah. So the importance of the transit, really whether you're building these large features or ponds, it's just, it's, it's a way to get you to understand where water level is or just establish different elevations based off of the benchmark right. that you set. Yep. And it's just, it's a very, very crucial tool yeah, in sure. your toolbox. Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't be able to get all your edges perfect and then know where, uh, where to set the rocks to make it look natural if you didn't have to know where the water level was. Yeah. So. Or do these creative things where you're trying to go for a, like an achieved look. A specific look. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Bicho. Hey, what's going on? What up, dude? What's going on, man. Well, man. So what do you what do you <laughs> what do you and Corey got going over here? Mark and Dan are working on getting the structure, getting the trade rocks in, and our job is to follow them up with the finishing touches. We're filling in the gaps with gravel and the smaller pieces of the uh, Well you guys will make like light work of this in no time. You got Micho finishing that. So what they're doing is they're just filling in the little gaps and crevices in through here. We've got Team Taylor, <laughs> Ryan, and Daniel over here finishing up the slate work that Jack and I started yesterday it looks absolutely outstanding i love the stack slate it's a very custom look you can see we've got a six watt light built into the wall right there that's about six inches below water and you can see taylor's fine attention to detail even the stuff that you won't ever see from the deck but you will see it from over here it's still that last 10 percent that really just sets this thing off so we made sure to keep that liner up high we did a batten strip to secure it along the bottom of the joists that are the structure for our deck so all this liner will be be trimmed at some point once we get that stack slate up high enough but right now it's just holding it into place so it's looking really really great in here and then we also have more digging happening as Dan starts to dig out a deep pooling area in this stream is which as you can see is right here that log that we put in a few seconds ago is laying right there and then we've got one stone where Heather's at just kind of setting the curve of that stream so he's gonna start digging this out getting rid of all this dirt and then getting it to the point where it kind of bellies out comes back up and has some of these like backwater plunge pools. You got Mark over here figuring out depth of the pools. So Dan, speak to the theory behind doing some of these deeper plunge pools and that kind of stuff. So when stream in nature goes from deep to shallow, deep to shallow, there's always a reason for it. So there's bedrock underneath. In this case, we're gonna give the illusion that this log jammed up in the corner of the stream, which streams always turn for a reason there was a big rock or whatever, which again, we can't get that crazy. We're gonna make this log jam, and a lot of times uh, rivers will pile gravel and silt and all kinds of debris up against those log jams, which we have a, a shallow area. It just naturally, by over time, it jams everything up and then just leaves a, a washed out deeper section behind. So we're just gonna try to mimic that and get, keep that idea in mind and see what happens. It's awesome. Happening here, we've got the whole pond essentially rocked in. So you can yeah. see we've got Ryan over here. He's gonna be working with Corey over there by the cleanout pump. So we're just gonna start rinsing all this stuff down to stay ahead of the game with these guys. And then you've got Ed the Pond Professor and Dan from Mark the Pond Guy. I was thinking we should run the plumbing in through here, right? Yep. Before we start uh, getting the liner back over because all of our plumbing is gonna run underneath yeah, the stream get to the waterfall section. Right. Yeah. With that said, yeah. guys, I know we want to have as much water volume and velocity as possible. So just explain to the viewers, you know, when we're figuring out pumps and that kind of stuff, what we're looking for based on the aesthetic volume, right, and functionality of the water feature that, that Dan's trying to accomplish, yeah. right? One of the things with pumps, what's kind of unique about them is we have to look at a lot of different factors. We're looking at the total pipe run, we're looking at the height that we're pumping that water, we're also looking at the pipe diameter. So larger flows and a lot of situations we're going to go with a three inch diameter pipe which will lower the water velocity lowers the head pressure so this gives us more of an output in certain situations though that can be detrimental because that means that the pump is running on the far right side of the curve it's producing too much water and it can be problematic for it. but this line's only going to be running for a couple days yeah so yeah, we're just looking for as much water as possible so what we want to do is kind of cross reference everything try to figure out which pumps are going to be best for us it's going to be the five to nine is it going to be the ten thousand the twelve pm whatever combination we 
can put together to give us that maximum volume. That's I think I think that's what we got to do. Is yeah, kind of just work back through the charts. Yep. We're gonna have water coming out all over the place. So we're gonna have plenty of places to disperse out. <laughs> so exactly. Crank it up. We want some nice thick water coming through the stream so that the trout can travel back and forth and stuff. So exactly. Pretend that I'm not here. what we needed because we're going to have that big elevation change. Remember the goal for this project, recreate that northwestern mountain type of a stream. So you go up into the northwest, right, the, the home of the harps, you got those big steep uh, inclines, you got those big mountainous areas, and then it's going to start to taper off a little bit, coming down into like that Piedmont area, those foothills. So we're trying to replicate that. We have that big tall stuff, it's going to be really crashing, a lot of white water, and then it's going to lower itself down over at the bottom part. That's the habitat for the trout. Well, it's been an exciting and eventful and very productive, I think, day, yeah, day two. Two, right? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> days running together. <laughs> Dan, we made an enormous amount of progress today, but tell us how you feel and then what your goals are. Today, we got a lot of moss done. We got a lot of edging and, and uh, steps and stuff over by the entry. So, a lot of more detailed work, but we still made a lot of progress. This stump was a, a really cool I, feature we found that the, the water's going to be going through the roots. It's going to look pretty awesome. The wood elements are so key, like we talked about earlier in the video but it's also that attention to detail and again like we talked about the adjustments in depth like some of these pooling right, areas right. and stuff past that but actually originally yesterday I was talking about having the fish swim up here mm -hmm. and we did change those levels if they if they want to swim up some shallow water they will but we changed the water level from the lower section or between the lower section and the upper section now because this patio is the same level as the house deck but be below the structure uh, the framework of the, of the deck so we raised this up about six inches just to get our water and our stream closer to the, the grade, so it'll look better. And then we have this nice little kind of roll. It's not gonna be a waterfall, it's just kind of like gravel roll into the oh, it's section. Close to 40,000 gallons pumping through there. Yeah, it's gonna be, be between 30 and, 30 and 40,000, yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be ripping in through yeah. there. Good progress today, it was fun, that was fun. I love the way the steppers and everything turned out. Like you said, we, we've, we've got the frame rock for that waterfalls, which is, again, the biggest rock on the project. Yeah. Started the first waterfalls. We got some of those elements, like the stepping stones, yeah. like we talked about. They ended up a little bit different than I thought. It's not a traditional, like, easy step. It's, it's more rugged and mountainous. Mountain stream is what we're going after, so they're, they're kind of a, a jump. Yep. Not, not quite a jump, but it's a big step. All right. Should we call it? Let's call it. Let's get some beers. Cheers!